Hi guys, Micro here. This is the 10 HP Hero episode 18. This episode is all about pets, shark soup and the beach. I finally get around to making all of those shark soups, but because there's a 30k time limit a day, it means that I can't actually buy the Slayer lamps for experience yet. So I'm going to continue selling the shark soups every single day and then buy the Slayer lamps and make a video on that when I can. So let's get into this video. At the start of this month there was a pest control spotlight so I did quite a lot of pest control during that weekend. I spent all of the experience I could into range and it got me from 88 to 91 when I first traded in the points and then I got a bit more points before ending so I got a total of around 1200 points to spend. Those 1200 points got me from 88 to 92 range. Halfway to 99. That's going to be a good one to get. I was doing a bit of krill on the hardcore Iron Man. So I was recording this screen. And while I was recording doing some krill. I got Willow on my other screen AFKing on the arc. Oh hey. I got fireworks. So I was super confused. And I realised I got Willow on my 10 HP pure. I thought I already had that bet. It's like 30 million experience in divination. Better late than never I guess. Yeeeee. Willow isn't that bad of a skill in pet. It does look quite nice. It's very colourful. That's my seventh skill in pet on here. Slowly but surely racking them up. Okay, I was AFKing a bit too hard while doing a voiceover and I got 99 farming. The arc is great. Obviously the experience an hour isn't that amazing, but I need the sliced mushrooms anyway. So I'm really happy that I got 99. That's another 99 ticked off. Shame I didn't realise I was so close and couldn't record it. That's what you get from AFKing too hard, I guess. 99 farming boys. It was now time to weave my ancestral energy into Wobblegong oil using 20 energy and 20 Alea sea salt. Because I have so much Alea sea salt I can make tons and tons of Wobblegong oil and then also convert that Wobblegong oil into turtle shell bowls. It's important to note if you wear the divination skill cape you have a very small chance of actually saving the energy while transmuting. This even works with transmuting into Wobblegong oil and things. It has a very low chance to proc with ancestral energy but when it does proc it is super helpful because not only are you saving some energy when it's ancestral you're also actually saving some chimes which is great. As you can see in my chat box I saved some ancestral energy when transmuting with the skill cape perk. It doesn't happen all too often, it happens probably once every 20 to 50. But any type of saving is worth it because essentially you're saving a lot of chimes when you're doing it over a long period of time like I am. Transmuting the Wobbegong oil was actually quite good experience as well and I got 107 divination. I managed to make over 11,000 Wobbegong oil before even actually cooking my Wobbegongs. So now it was time to make shiny tortoiseshell bowls with ancestral energy and Wobbegong oil. When you're doing this transmute, it's just 10 Wobbegong oil straight up for 10 shiny turtle shell bowls. The only time you lose is when you transmute your Alea Sea Salt into Wobbegong oil, just because Alea Sea Salt is so much easier to obtain than the other things. So I was back to transmuting for a little while until I could then go and cook it all. We managed to end with just over 8,000 of every single resources and slightly more sliced mushrooms than anything else. This means that I'll be able to make over 8,000 shark soups. 8,000 shark soups alone without any procs would be over 800k chimes. Definitely super hyped to cook all of these and see how many procs I get. Before we cook the shark soups, we need to actually put it all together. This means that we have to make uncooked shark soups and we need to do over 8,000 of these. This was really, really annoying for me because it gives like no experience and it takes so long when you have all of these resources. It probably would have been wiser to just do it in stages rather than doing it all at the same time. But AFK and on the arc is just so addictive. I don't want to leave and do this. So probably in the future I'll do it more often. I'll probably do it every two or three thousand shark soups just to make life easier. Because yeah, combining these all together for eight thousand shark soups was not a fun task. Took absolutely ages. It was time to cook eight thousand one hundred and ninety-eight uncooked shark soups. Remember to use a portable range not only for the 10% experience buff but also the chance to make double the shark soups when you cook. If you can double a shark soup you're essentially gaining 102 chimes. Getting extra chimes is always a great thing so as many shark soups as you can make as possible the better. 
Definitely worth doing it on a portable range. The grill in Waco still gives you the percent chance to double it, but it doesn't give you the extra experience, so you might as well use a portable range for both. I managed to end with 8,655 cooked shark soups to sell. This means I profited 457 shark soups. 457 shark soups is nowhere near 10%, it's more around 5%, but even those 5% extra shark soups that I obtained was so many extra giants. That's nearly 50,000 chimes for free just from Prox while cooking. I'll definitely take that. As soon as I got back to Waiko, I needed to buy the commodity sell per day increase. You can buy this upgrade twice and then once it's fully maxed out, you can sell 30,000 chimes worth of items every single day. This means that I can sell 30,000 chimes worth of shark soup every single day, which means it'll probably take me 30 days to sell all of these shark soups. But once I've sold them all, I'm definitely going to make a video talking about all of the Slayer lamps and showing all of the experience I get in Slayer. I'm hoping to get them all done before Double Experience Weekend so I can get loads of experience in Slayer. So when I do my Slayer dummies during that time, I'm going to get some really nice experience. Selling my first lot gave me my first lot of 30,000 chimes and I'm going to be doing this every day for a while now. Then it was back to fishing on the Ark on my claimed island. I have two Wobbegong spots now. A double Wobbegong spot on my claimed island will make it easier to get those Wobbegong oils. My 10 HP Pure now has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and that's the 8th pet. Bubbles is a pretty ugly pet though, you got to admit that. I think that's all of the ones for the arc for me now, so this guy probably won't get any more pets. Continuing to sell my shark soups daily, I have 150k chimes now, so we're slowly but surely going up. The sand event has recently just finished and I managed to get so much sand on this guy. I transferred it for 200 small boxes and undone every single one. Put loads of bonus experience into different skills. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check out the video of my loot from 75,000 sand and where I went into a bit of a description about what I actually obtained. But long story short, I got quite a lot of bonus experience in range. I got 84 Slayer, which is pretty cool. And then I also put quite a lot of bonus experience into agility for double experience weekend with Silverhawks. And I got some nice Silverhawk downs, which is going to save me some money. The last thing I did was put a little tiny bit of bonus experience into summoning because that will help for double experience weekend as well. Now the beach is here, I'll be doing a lot of the coconut toss. This is really awesome for range experience on my 10 HP pure because obviously it doesn't give any HP experience and it's quite consistent. Whenever it's not happy hour, I use cabbages because it fills up your heat meter the slowest, which means you can get the most experience per day if you don't worry about the speed that your meter fills. If I'm going to be on for a fair amount of time, I want my meter to fill as slowly as possible, so I use cabbages because of that. This will allow me to get the most experience every single day. Whenever it's a happy hour, I do the fastest thing, which is the the chin chompers they give you the least amount of experience but because they're so accurate they hit nearly every single time this makes them give you so much experience in a happy hour your meter doesn't feel at all so it doesn't matter how often you're hitting if you've done chin chompers normally your meter will fill super super quickly and you won't be able to do it for that long in the day but it's definitely an awesome thing and i'm really glad i put bonus experience into range for this I'm stocking up on all of my beach cocktails as well and my water balloons for some extra experience later on. The other thing that I plan on doing more often on my 10 HP Pure now is sinkholes. I'm going to be doing sinkholes every single day again. I kind of got to 75 Dungeoneering and just stopped for some reason. I don't even know why. I just really didn't want to get off of the arc to do sinkholes, but I'm going to do it nowadays because the sinkholes experience is too good to pass up and I definitely need 99 Dungeoneering in the end. Sinkholes are also much nicer now that you can hide your left click attack option. When I'm running around trying to pick up exploratory totems and things like that, I'll never ever Ever accidentally left click attack a mob anymore i used to be super scared that i'd accidentally punch a skeleton and then someone would kill it and i'd get some experience or something so it actually allows me to run around pick up some totems do some skilling and stuff with no threat at all to my account definitely going to be doing this so i can get some dungeoneering gains sinkholes are just such a good way to get dungeoneering experience i also have quite a lot of dungeoneering tokens from the beach event so i don't know what i'm going to do with those i don't think i need any more scrolls or anything so i'll probably trade those in for some experience as well so now the beach has been here for like four days i'm getting some serious gains in range i've gone from 92 to 96 and i've used up all of my bonus experience from the sand event i need 200k until i'm 97 range and then hopefully I can get those last two levels throughout the month of this event. 
If I do manage to complete all of the range and I get 99, I'm going to move over here and start doing the strength training. If I can then start doing some strength training and get some strength levels, it's going to be absolutely great. So my main goal is to get 99 range from this beach event, but then if I can get any strength levels after that, it's going to be a bonus. Anyway, that's it for this update on my 10 HP Pure. I hope you did enjoy this video. Give it a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new for loads of RuneScape 3 related things. And until next time, see ya.